not just his health. Of course, we've talked about Miles um, being lost, and and then uh, you know, but you have a guy in, in Jalen Daniels who is who, you know played half the snaps of this team last season, and and uh, you know, I really tip my hat to him because he stayed locked in and prepared, and uh, I think that showed, and it and it, it shows itself again this week. Could could Kendrick potentially come back next year? And is that something you guys have discussed? Um, we haven't even gone that direction. And you know, he has graduated, and uh, you know, he does have another year. And and there were some things, but you know, uh, there's a lot going on with him that he, that's not. This isn't the time to discuss that. I want to ask you about the run game um, a couple of weeks in a row where that's, that's kind of struggled. Is there anything obvious that's been an issue? Is, has that surprised you at all that you guys haven't got the run game going a little bit? Um, well, it's, it's offensively flowing completely. I think as you said, when we've been able to do things, it's, it, it's been, it's been a complimentary type game. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, not, having all my numbers correct. Um, but I think these are two of the better run defenses we've gone back to back weeks and people that are rated nationally against playing the run. So I don't, that's not take away anything away from our opponents and, and what they've done. But uh, yes, we need to be, you know, that that's where it starts for us. Kind of like big picture, not just on, on game days, but in the month of November, what do you feel like you need to accomplish like with this team and this roster before the off season gets here? Um, we'll continue to progress is, is that, and I've said this, you know, to the point where we're all tired of, of hearing it is that there's small strides being made, but yet they're not strides that are showing up on a scoreboard. Um, you know, I've, had had the people here give me um, nine game breakdown. Um, team played nine games last year. Let's let, let's do some comparatives. But of course, each and every situation is slightly different. I, I we see a lot more gains than um, regression. And uh, in this um, individually, though, you continue to you know uh, you know today was our, our players had really good energy. I'm really proud of them. Um, you know, on the defense side of the ball, they kind of changed up a little bit in their format of what they were doing and, and added a couple things that added some juice to it. And really proud of the way they went went about it for, for considering what, where it stands record wise. So with that, what I evaluate again is our, our energy, um, coachability, willing to be coached, wanting to be coached, how we go about our, our effort and strain and finish, all the things that we talked about in August are still true. And, and when we've talked to players um, in certain situations, um, I bring that up. I go, what have we changed? Have we changed much in what, what we're expecting of you? And I think not saying, I don't know what it was like before. I don't, it's not, I'm not worried about that. But what I, what I think uh, some of the players have, have said and, and see is that they, they appreciate and have embraced the consistency in which the, you know, the process that we are going about is, is here for, and, and they do that. So uh, again, we've talked about times where at certain times, I'm not going to worry about what the scoreboard says. Okay. We're going to worry about how we play this down, this series, this quarter, this half, and then this game. And if we continue to do that uh, again, we've had a chance to take some younger guys on trips and if we can work them in, but we're not just going to play. I, I still think we, and I've said, I said it from the very first meeting with our, with our seniors is that I owe it to them. This program owes it to them to do everything we can to put ourselves in position to win football games and give them a good experience. And I don't believe we've shortchanged them in our, in our goals and approaches. And I don't want to do that here down the stretch. With that, as we said a week ago, we're going to try to break this into a third of a season. And unfortunately, we're 0-1 right now. Um, somebody handed me something that, um, for whatever that's worth, is our first nine opponents have won 72% of their games. Okay, now um, our opponents the last three weeks are sub-500. 
Okay, so we'll see. That doesn't mean they're still not really good football teams, and we know that. But I also feel that some of the teams that we've gone through this and, and played um, sometimes gets lost in, in it as well. With, with some of the, the young guys on the roster who, you know, aren't playing on Saturdays or maybe just playing very little on Saturdays, what, what can you do with them in practices just to kind of like maybe bring them into the offseason like at a, at a high point? Um, yeah, you know, I think Matt Gildersleeve does a great job in, 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 in his time with them. Um, like most programs, there's probably an extra lift. We have an extra lift for development and there's mentoring during that time. We talk about opportunities for our players for reps and talking about, um, where that future is, um, you know, of, of embracing where, where it's heading into the off season. Um, not everyone will get the opportunity to necessarily travel and rotate into a special team, but there's a lot of those things that, that you continue to try to do. I Coach, that's a good enough answer. Yep. Coach, you've got more guys from Texas than any other state. Does that maybe play into some of the juice you felt on the practice field that a lot of the guys get a chance to go home where family's going to be able to come see them play? I hope so. I mean, I would think um, I don't spend a lot of time. Um, overly addressing all those type of things. Maybe, maybe I should, I'm, I'm not positive, but um, I would think as young athletes, when they started in high school, um, being recruited by, by the University of Texas was, you know, probably a goal. And, uh, and, and a lot of times that, that, can, that can motivate one to, whether, whether it be an energy or, or preparation and all those things to, uh, to go out and, and, and play with that extra chip on their shoulder. And, and uh, if that's the case and it can benefit us on Saturday night, I'm all for it. Texas played a couple of quarterbacks the last game. Tactically, did they look different? You know, I, I think, you know, Coach Sarkeesian, I, I've never met him, but I know obviously his reputation and success in, in, in many different parts of this country have, have spoken for itself. Um, and is you know uh, his stamp and innovation and of offensive play is 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 you know well known within the profession and of college football. So I, I look at it as they're using both of those to the best of their abilities of of what they can do. There's a lot of similarity, yes, and carry over. And um, I know that uh, they've got themselves two productive quarterbacks, and and we have to be prepared for both of them. Bijan Robinson is a running back that has quite a resume. What what stands out and makes him unique? Yeah, I was showing Andy Kolnicki this morning, you know, a couple of his runs, you know, uh, um, again, you know, the vision, speed, acceleration. I think acceleration is one that really impressed me to, when I was watching. I think it was the Rice game, long touchdown run, just, just the burst seeing something in the acceleration and the distance that he created on it so quickly. Um, but uh, excellent running back who's, who's physical and uh, multidimensional that uh, he's going to be, uh, I mean, he's what, I think he's a catcher so away from beating their second leading receiver. So again, I go back to offensive philosophy, let alone the talent of one individual, they're gonna find ways to put the ball in his hands. Okay, we'll go to Zoom, go ahead, John. Yeah, Lance, in the last few home games, you guys have had like over 250 official, unofficial visitors. And I don't, I don't ever remember that many ever coming in that span. What does that do? And, and talk about how you've been able to get that kind of results and then having all those kids there that you can talk to. Um, well, thanks, John. Um, obviously, the, the credit goes to Rob Ionello and our, our recruiting department of, of – uh, you know, as, as long as well as our, our coaches of actively, um, you know, working to get get um, student athletes on campus. Um, again, the timing of, of arriving here are, um, you know, as you know, John, we were we, we have more people visiting these last three games than attended, you know, our, our first two camps, you know, and, and because of the the timeliness of getting everything approved and getting young men on campus, we're, we're just behind in a lot of different ways. So getting a chance to, to, to get them here 
um, interact with us for what you can do on, in that short period of time. But more importantly, to experience a game, see our beautiful campus, see our facilities, and, and continue that, that, that relationship building and evaluation process for both parties. I thought is uh, extremely important. Um, again, we want to continue to send a message and uh, that we're serious about recruiting this area. And uh, hopefully we can continue to do so that in our last home game. Did I answer everything there? I'm sorry. Hey Lance, I just wanted to ask you, uh, what did you think about Sam Burt being able to come back and uh, what can he do for you guys the rest of the season? I didn't hear the second part, I'm sorry. Oh, and just what do you think he, he'll be able to do for you the rest of the season? Okay. Um, yeah, Sam's been, you know, full disclosure, he's been, he's been available now for, for a couple of weeks and, and he's been doing some things. And, um, you know, Sam, you know, we talked about whether or not where it was gonna be at for him. And we talked about trying to play it out as is, or um, would he like the red shirt? And he, he took the, he said, you know, after some long discussions, he's, just, you know, he wants the red shirt, which also, you know, says a lot about him as a young man wanting to be a part of this program, his passion to help turn this thing around. Um, so with that, um, the first thing he talked about was he wanted, he, he said, we talked about you have three games to play. Um, what three do you want them to be? And he said, he re it really didn't matter, but um, he wanted one of those to be the Kansas State game. And uh, so that's, that's why the first one was there. And uh, we have three games left and we'll make decisions as we, uh, as we progress here this week, if, if this will be another one that he'll play in. Um, what does it bring? Uh, maturity, confidence, uh, leadership. Um, he, you know, some of those were there already, but when he's back on the field, his work ethic, um, all those type of things uh, are, are very valuable, especially when you're as young as we are. Okay, thank you.